So I've been in the dating industry for many years now, and I remember a time when dating coaches and experts used to give really fancy titles to things that they were trying to be able to explain to their clients. And one of those was approach anxiety. So if you've not heard that title before, the idea of approach anxiety is that if you see someone that you really like or that you're attracted to, and you are scared to go over and talk to them, you're feeling that fear, you have the symptoms of anxiety kick in and you just can't physically move, then that is deemed as approach anxiety. But I would like to actually make the case that it's not really approach anxiety that you're feeling, it's social anxiety. And I say that because over the years, all of the guys that I have seen my clients work with, and by clients, I mean my dating coach clients, and also clients that I've worked with myself, it's not really just been a case of the women that they've been scared to go and talk to. It's just talking to new people in general. Now, you're not really going to have approach anxiety if you know, you're going to go and ask uh, a, a retail employee a question about clothes or if you're going to go to a supermarket and you need to go to the checkout to go and pay for your food you don't have approach anxiety in these circumstances but you do have social anxiety which is then again being out in a social environment and having to go and talk to new people and i'd go as far to say is that could be essentially an umbrella title for two particular uh, other fears that any guy would have. And one would be the fear of the unknown, which is you don't know or you can't predict the future of how a conversation is going to go. And also you have a fear of running out of things to say or not knowing what to say. So you have a fear of having a lack of communication skills which both of these are very, very valid fears to have. You know, no one knows what to expect in the future. That is absolutely normal. And for guys who have a lot of social anxiety, that just means that they haven't had enough life experience and enough conversations to one, develop that trust in themselves and two, pick up enough topics of conversation and questions and, and intrigue and uh, genuine curiosity to bring into a conversation to constantly have ammunition, I suppose, of things that they can talk about with any man or woman that they are speaking to. So how can you overcome this fear of uh, approach anxiety or having social anxiety? Well, I think easily a first step, and this one's gonna be applicable to the guys who are calling the situation approach anxiety, is that you need to stop calling it approach anxiety. It's one of those titles that the more you draw awareness to it, the worse it will be. It's a bit like maybe if you were a teenager and you had like a spot on your face, and the more you're aware of this spot and the acne that you've got, the worse it kind of feels. And it is the same with this, that if you keep drawing attention to this particular pivotal point that involves you having to speak to someone, then of course you are going to make it worse. If you see someone that you like and you're there going like, oh my God, I've got approach anxiety, I can't do this, I can't go and talk to that someone, then you're going to talk yourself out of going to approach someone. So first things first is you need to lose the actual lingo of approach anxiety and just be aware that you have social anxiety and accept that, which is then the next step. Accept that you have social anxiety and own it. Take the responsibility of it and be like, you know what? I don't like being out in public, but if I want to get better at talking to people and be less anxious, then I need to go out and I need to talk to people. Now, the third thing that you then need to consider is once you've kind of dropped the approach anxiety lingo and you've taken responsibility and accept that you have social anxiety, when you're out and about, if you, I want you then to purposely go and look for someone that you can actually talk to. 
And when you see someone that you are attracted to and you aren't thinking about approach anxiety, the next phase is to try and actively not think about it, which might be a bit of like an elephant in the room kind of scenario where if you try not to think about it, you will think about it. Instead, I want you to try and focus your attention on the person that you're attracted to and overwrite whatever kind of internal dialogue you've got going on with thinking to yourself, what is it about that person that I am genuinely curious about? What intrigues me about them that would have me go over and strike a conversation with them? If they're attractive, say, you know what? I absolutely love how Spanish they look. Maybe I'm going to go over and I'm going to ask them if they're Spanish and, and say that I thought they were attractive. Or if you like their style, then go over and say, you know what? Your style caught my attention. I absolutely loved it. I was just curious where you are, where you got that, that look from. And maybe it's even worth me just mentioning here that, you know, even just as a practice thing, don't even worry about trying to, you know, go for a phone number or whatever. Just practice getting comfortable having a conversation with a complete stranger. So be curious about anything. Maybe it's their fashion. Maybe it's their perfume. Maybe it's their the look and feel that they've got. Maybe it's the confidence that they've got. You could see someone who walked by incredibly elegantly and stop them and say, "I sorry, I've just got to say, you have you have got such an elegant walk about you. So I, I was just genuinely curious. Are you like a, a, a catwalk model? Are you like uh, a, a professional in something of sorts? Which sounds maybe a bit, bit dodgy without actually giving it a professional title, but you hopefully you kind of get the gist there. So maybe have a think about what do you see in that person that gives you a justifiable reason to go over and ask them a question? And it's an important one and a great one at that because it already gives you an opener. It gives you something to say rather than you thinking, what am I going to say? And by showing genuine curiosity into someone, it allows you then to ask more questions about that particular topic, as well as there might be other things that that person says that allows you to branch that conversation into any other area, which is why you can never predict how a conversation is going to go and why it can be great that every conversation that you do have, it can be very different from each other. And the last thing that I would recommend, so I think this is number four, is I want you to then, once you don't have the hiccups, I want you then to go over and just start walking to them. And I want you to consider the 90-10% rule here. I want you to carry on walking towards them no matter what, at least 90% of the way. And then at that point, or at least during that entire process of the 90%, you can decide if you genuinely want to talk to her or not. Perhaps maybe, and this has certainly been a case for guys over the years, where from a distance, a girl has been their type, but as soon as they're a few feet away, they're like, oh, actually, you know what? She's not for me. Uh, uh, it was one of those from a distance, but up close, no, I, I think I'd much prefer to give that a miss. And that is absolutely okay to at least take the initiative, walk pretty much almost all the way over, and then decide just before you start the conversation, do you want to do it or not is fantastic. And then of which as well, psychologically, you're also tricking yourself into going like, well, I'm 90% of the way here. I might as well do that last 10% and just go for it. And especially if it is with someone that you either attracted to or that you just want to practice having a conversation with. And there is nothing wrong with that. You don't have to, especially if you're at the start of your uh, your developmental journey in building your confidence and overcoming your social anxiety, you can take baby steps. You don't have to go full throttle and try and be getting like phone numbers and dates on the first day. You have to, sometimes you do have to learn to walk before you can run, but sometimes also you can experience running to know that actually, yeah, I, I need to walk for a while. And that is absolutely okay too. So that you will have to judge on your own. But definitely for guys who are new to this, go over, try and just start a conversation, but go that 90% of the way and then decide, do you want to do that last 10%
to actually start a conversation with that. And you'll find that you will be tricking yourself into actually starting a conversation. So is there then really uh, a difference between social anxiety and approach anxiety? Not really. Um, Approach anxiety is a made up term in the dating industry and community. It is though really just social anxiety. You haven't got this fear of just going over to talk to a stranger. You've got these fears of just talking to everyone in general, or what I should say is talking to a woman that you're attracted to uh, for the approach anxiety. So just consider that. Try not to get too lost in the uh, the old school pickup lingo. Uh, I know it can be really useful to certainly talk about um, with other fellow guys in the community, but the more you do draw awareness to it and not think, oh, actually, it's social anxiety that I've got. If I can work on my social anxiety, then this approach anxiety won't really be an issue. And if you are a guy that maybe still can't overcome that, then following it at the very least that that 90-10% rule will help you to override whatever limiting belief or thought process is happening to you whilst you are considering approach anxiety. You know, it's very hard to have approach anxiety if you've walked 90% over to a woman and then you've also thought about what kind of question could I ask her? What am I genuinely curious about? And also you've just focused on the girl rather than thinking how I can't do this. I'm frozen to the spot. Oh no, she's going. Oh, I can't, I got to let her go. You know, none of that. Just start walking over and just think about that question, what you're going to ask her. And I can assure you this approach anxiety thing will definitely go. But more importantly, approach anxiety is social anxiety. There's no difference between the two. Maybe just a bit of a broader sense of who it affects rather than just sort of like the one girl that you're attracted to. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on this video. If you can, please comment below. And if also you've got other questions or videos that you would love for me to make. And if you did really love this video and certainly any other videos that I've got, I would genuinely appreciate any uh, likes on this video and definitely any subscriptions to my channel too. It just allows me to reach more guys and help them with more issues of things that they have whilst they're on their own personal development journey in the dating industry and dating community in general. So I really want to be able to make a difference and uh, help as many men as I can and uh, I need your help for that too. And of course if you are someone who's struggling with their anxiety um, perhaps have a look at my website. I offer my dating desensitization therapy where we go out on the street and I will help you to specifically become desensitized to the skill of cold approaching and even have you prepped for a dating coach if you are thinking about going to a dating coach too. And if you've also got maybe other traumas that are giving you this anxiety to go and talk to new people then perhaps also have a look at my integral eye movement therapy that I offer on my website too. So other than that, my name is Dan, that dating anxiety guy. Again, thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe and look forward to more videos from me.